So you've decided that you're going to have an FUE. Before making a decision on where you have your FUE done, you need to know that there are four different types of FUE clinics. The first and best type of FUE clinic is a manual FUE clinic. In this type of clinic, a doctor does the hard work of selecting and scoring or cutting around the graft with a handheld tool and then the doctor or a technician removes the graft from the skin also using handheld tools. FUE began and built its reputation on this particular method. It requires skill, dexterity, patience, and uh, above all else, experience. The very best and most consistent results come from these clinics worldwide and they are the only reason why FUE has any standing or credibility in the hair transplant field today. If you go through the internet, you will see that over 99% of the best results that are done by FUE are produced using this method. No question. So that was the first kind of FUE clinic. The second kind of FUE clinic is the rotary drill slash suction machine clinic. Um, here a machine consisting of a spinning punch hooked up to a suction device will literally score around the graft very quickly and then suck that graft out of the skin into some sort of uh, holding vessels with water. These clinics are by far the most numerous clinics out there but unfortunately produce the poorest quality hair transplants results known. Look at these rotary device patients who came to me for evaluation and repair. They don't look too good. Here's a patient who had 1,500 grafts placed via rotary FUE machine, no growth. Here's another patient who had 1,200 grafts placed via rotary suction machine, no growth. And yet another patient who had 1,750 grafts placed via rotary suction machine, again, no growth. Now, look at two of the three patients who I was able to repair. The third one is scheduled to be repaired using non-rotary, non-suction techniques. See how much better that looks? How much fuller? How much more natural that looks? That's how it ought to be. Yeah. That's how it ought to be. Okay, let's continue. But why are people using and buying these machines if they're consistently putting out poor results? Well, the answer is very simple. It's faster than the manual method. It uses fewer staff, requires less experience to, to use. So it becomes a very attractive way to get into the hair transplant business. The problem is, these machines inflict far greater damage to the graft. And if the graft is damaged, then its chances of growing are significantly decreased. And you can see that in the results that I just showed you. And these devices inflict far more damage onto the graft than someone who carefully and manually extracts that graft out, as I've been doing f since, uh, gee, it must be 2001, since the inception yeah. of, uh, of FUE hair transplants. There's another thing you should know. Most of the clinics who are using these machines are almost by definition amateur clinics or newcomers to the field. But as a lot of these doctors are finding it as a, uh, a, a kind of a turnkey, a quick turnkey business to add to their practice. And in fact, the companies that are producing these uh, rotary suction devices are marketing them to doctors mm -hmm. as sort of a turnkey device. Mm -hmm. Something that says, hey, I know you've never really done a hair transplant in your life, or maybe you've only done a few, and uh, if you buy this, now you can do more of them. And it is true, because it does make the extraction process faster. Mm -hmm. But there's a price to be paid. The faster extraction comes at the cost of the quality of the graft. That is, the graft will be more injured. Just like anything you do in life, if you have to cut out a piece of paper, if you do it slowly and carefully, you're going to do a pretty good job of cutting it out. But if you do it very quickly, you can cut lots of paper out, but how good is that cut going to be? Not very good, I can assure you. Unfortunately, and this is amazing, unfortunately the public has absolutely no idea yeah. of the downsides of these machines. They have no idea of what I'm telling you and what Dr. Bloxham are telling you in these videos. Because instead, the, the clinics that are using these devices, the manufacturers who are producing these devices, are claiming falsely that their technology represents a revolution in the hair transplant industry. In fact, it does not have any, there is no revolution in the hair transplant industry. All it's doing is making the job easier for the doctor, but it's not improving the quality of the removal of the graft. It is not improving the results of the hair transplant. 
So how is this actually a revolution? Well, I guess you can say if the doctor has to work less and make the same money, I guess that's sort of a revolution. But I don't think that's the <laughs> kind of revolution for, them. Yeah. Yeah, for you. I think, you know, of course, you want the best for what's, what's the best for your hair and for your surgery. And these devices simply are not it. It does allow the doctor to move faster, but you're also getting a poorer quality yeah. result. And this is across the board. There is nobody who is a master at using these machines. They're almost impossible to control. There's almost no experience level that makes a difference with the use of these machines. As a physician who's been performing hair transplantation exclusively for 23 years, I would highly recommend you stay away from clinics that utilize these suction slash, uh, rotary slash suction machines. I think they're very dangerous and counterproductive, and I think they set the field back. Look for clinics that don't use them. They probably have more experience. Okay, so we've discussed the manual FUE method, which is the best. We've discussed the uh, rotary suction machines, which uh, are, are not nearly as good as the manual FUE. And now I want to discuss the robot clinics, the clinics that use robotic machines to perform the hair transplants. The problem with those machines is that while they supposedly perform the hair transplants, what they really are only doing is scoring around the yeah. graft. They're not actually removing the graft. For people who are new to FUE, FUE is a multi-stage process. One, you have to score around the graft with a punch-like tool. And then two, you grab the graft and you have to gently pull it from the skin. So they're both difficult parts and require experience, but the easier of the two is the scoring. It's easier to teach somebody how to score than how to remove the grafts themselves. This device has no feedback control because there is no direct connection between the physician who's operating the machine and the actual touching of the patient. So you can't feel anything. When we do hair transplants via FUE by hand, we actually are feeling every millimeter or micrometer as our hands pushes the tool into the skin and we're feeling feedback and building a picture in our brains as to what is actually happening under the skin in that particular area. That's the most gentle means of, uh, of doing a hair transplant. When you're using a machine to do it, the machine's only going in and out very quickly along a straight line. There is absolutely no feedback or dynamic manipulation as you're going in. It's a spinning punch on a robot arm and it's just like a viper. It just goes in and out very fast. And the reason why you use this, what you do with this dynamic control with this feedback you're saying is that while you're scoring in there, punching in there with the hand, and you feel something, you're able to make adjustments. You're able to change yeah. your angle, pressure, things like that. The robot, like you're saying, can't do that. If it's cutting too deep, if it's cutting at the wrong angle, if it's twisting too much, no feedback. Just still keeps doing boom, 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 it's boom, a machine. same thing. doesn't matter what's there. It's yeah. going to go through it the same way. So that's a big problem from the surgical. And anybody who does any kind of fine work, even as a hobby, knows yeah. it's much easier to use your hands and your fingers to feel and get feedback when you're doing something delicate, as opposed to using some big, massive machine with a computer doing the control and using a joystick. Okay, here's another big problem I might have with these robots. For all their technology and fancy cases and the arm and all that, bottom line is it doesn't improve the safety of the extraction mm -hmm. of the graphs. When you extract a graft with one of these machines, you have not improved the chances of that graft coming out uninjured. Um, if anything, it's the other way around because you don't have the aforementioned dynamic ability and feedback ability. Um, the grafts are coming out uh, damaged or more damaged than they need to be. Yeah, the quality is just less. No question. Yeah. Um, which brings us to the next point, is that it doesn't improve the final results. Well, if it doesn't improve the final results, then what is the point of their creation, <laughs> right? I mean, yeah. It makes no sense. Yes, I understand it looks really cool and cool and it's modern and it's new, but it's certainly not revolutionary because it's not improving the results no. one iota. So why are they building it and selling them? Well, they're building and selling them specifically for FUE hair transplant novices, people who have no experience in FUE or have tried but just don't have the knack to do the procedure or the patients to do the procedure. So they figure they can just buy a device, buy technology that will make up for their yeah. lack of experience yeah. or their, their inability to do it or their you know, desire to do it. So they're using that as a means to get into the FUE world when they know otherwise they wouldn't have been able to. There is no, I've been in this field for 23 years. I've been performing FUE since its inception uh, or reintroduction into uh, the hair transplant industry about 15 or 16 years ago. 
I know of no hair transplant doctor who has skill and experience in performing FUE who has thrown out their manual tools and purchased one of these yeah. machines. And of course, if these machines really worked, wouldn't we just buy a whole bunch of them? You know, line the, line the hallway line with the them and just, yeah. just do, you know, just to put, do, put 10 rooms down the hallway and just do 10 people yeah. in a day. And then we can sit back and read the paper and do nothing <laughs> while the robot does everything. And not only have you not seen any truly good FUE, manual FUE clinics abandon their manual, you have seen, and I've seen, clinics who did FUE a certain way, try the robot, and abandon it and go back yes. to their manual techniques. I've, I've, I can name several. I can think of several don't off the top name, of my head. Don't I won't name, name them. any, but I can think <laughs> of several off the top of my head that have done that. Yeah. Just from an experience point of view, we know of no doctors who have bought this device in place of using their manual instruments. Mm -hmm. So what it really uh, appeals to is the amateur who has no manual skills to fall back on or it's just somebody who wants to get into the business of hair transplants and thinks this is an easier way to do it. And it is an easier way to do it, but it comes at a price. And the price is the quality and consistency of the results. And so um, my humble suggestion is do not go to clinics to use robots. Almost by definition, they are inexperienced in FUE in general. Um, and is that who you want working on your scalp? Look for a doctor. If you definitely want to have FUE, Look for a clinic that has experience doing FUE manually. So the fourth and last type of FUE clinic is what we call the technician FUE clinic or the technician run FUE clinic. And it's exactly what it sounds like. It is an FUE clinic that is completely run by technicians. Sometimes there's a doctor on the premises. Sometimes the doctor will have minimal involvement like drawing the hairline or checking in. But the surgery itself, from graft extraction to graft planning and graft placement, is run solely by technicians. Now, these clinics are essentially legal in the United States, so it's very rare to see one in the U.S. However, uh, they do exist in certain places in Europe, and they're very common in the third world. So patients do need to be aware of their existence. They also need to be aware that some of the worst results come out of these clinics. Uh, some of the worst complications, some of the worst uh, overall experiences come from these clinics. So the patients need to be aware of this and uh, they need to be careful when it comes to these types of clinics. Right, so we told you about four different kinds of FUE clinics. The only ones that we would recommend are the manual FUE clinics. That's the best of the best mm -hmm. in the world. Every great FUE result you see online, at least every one I've seen online, has been from the manual clinics where they meticulously perform the procedure. Yep. The rotary suction clinics, the robot clinics, uh, these to my mind are clinics to be avoided simply because they use these technologies to make up for the lack of experience and ability. So you're really doing yourself a disservice going to them. But don't feel bad if you feel compelled to look at them because they do come across as being high-tech because of the equipment, but in reality it's not high-tech, it's not revolutionary, it's a step backwards for sure. And the tech clinics are just outrageous. Mm -hmm. uh, these things, uh, they're not just essentially illegal in the United States, they are illegal in the United States. Uh, any, anybody practicing medicine without a license uh, is committing felony, uh, and if a doctor is just marginally involving himself in a surgery and letting non-physician technicians plan and perform the procedure, uh, he's also, he's certainly in violation of his state medical board regulations. Remember, it's your scalp. You only have one of them. Take care of it. Use it wisely. I'm Dr. Alan Feller. Dr. Blake Bloxham. Take care. Thanks.